Hi there, I'm making another part two video of this Technics um, RS1500U um, tape deck repair. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I had two uh, very negative comments uh, on my last video uh, telling me that I'm not uh, a good teacher, I'm not giving a good video uh, repair video. I'm not really, um, I can't really teach anyone how to repair these. Uh, the reason being is they are so uh, complex and they've got so many transistors, hundreds of transistors in there. I doubt whether any two faults would be the same and they're very difficult to get into as well. So uh, apparently uh, one of the faults that these have are that the capacitors are failing and they are getting old and leaky. This power supply here has some large capacitors here. They're always a favorite to go because um, it's obviously a lot more current going through these than the smaller ones. But uh, any electrolytic capacitor is, uh, could obviously go with time. This is an old unit, very old. Uh, you can tell that by the sheer number of transistors we've got in here and some FETs. Um, these would in a modern machine be replaced with um, with op amps etc um, or even uh, surface mount devices so this is pretty old um, what can I tell you about this then I, I've never really worked on a Technics or I've never worked on a Technics deck this is my first deck so uh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing on this really um, Obviously, I, I've worked on a lot of Revoxes, so I know those quite well. And uh, obviously, the Akai's um, I know well as well. The Fostex and Tascans I know well. Um, but these, I don't, I don't know much about these. I will say that the layout on these is quite difficult to actually fault find these because uh, there's about 60 volts flying around here, there and everywhere on these. So... That will give you a shock. Uh, anything over 50 will, will give you a shock. What can I tell you about this? Well, I can tell you that this is the real motor uh, control board, or driver board, and the one in the back is to do with the reels as well. Um, this board here, this is the main board. So all the controls are from the front panel, the transport controls like rewind, fast forward, uh, record, play, pause, they all come onto here. And also with the remote socket at the back there, this, this uh, connector at the back that you see there in the middle of the picture, that is from that remote socket. So you all basically come onto this board and go through, there's seven uh, decoder chips there and um, they come onto this board and this is how you find out um, what, what you're doing, recording, pausing, playing. This is the connector you need to probe to see what is working. Now I believe that the yellow wire in that, which is uh, it's the connector, connector D, the yellow wire is fast forward. So when you press fast forward on the front panel, that signal is normally high, it will go to low. Uh, the orange, I believe, is rewind. So that's normally high. You press rewind and that will go low. I believe the brown wire, pin one of this connector, is play. And that is actually working. That is working. Whereas the rewind fast forward isn't, the record isn't, the pause isn't, the stop is. Um, so yeah, that that's all working. But obviously when you put it in play, the mot the real motors actually move and they, they work as they should do. The main problem is with this, the capstan motor isn't working at all. So when you have a tape in there, it's obviously straining to pull the tape round. Um, pulling a lot of current and that's set, uh, making my safety lamp ascend. So this is a problem. The capstan motor is one problem and also this board here, the main control board, 
none of the the rewind uh, pause fast forward nothing is working so there's a problem on this board probably with that uh, decoder circuit there also the other problem with this is this board here this is the capstan control board so this capstan motor is controlled by this this is actually this connector here connector h is actually coming from the top of the capstan motor so this is um, relaying all the signals to the capstan motor so uh, these ones here i believe if you scope them you should see a sinusoidal waveform going to the motor to make this uh, turn uh, looking on this um, board here you have three pins here now this pin on the end is earth the middle pin pin seven if you probe that you should see a triangle wave on there this end pin uh, you should see a signal on there but I'm not seeing a signal so what I did is, is I removed this piece at the back there so where they go on here uh, there's a, a FET transistor I think it's uh, it's uh, is it? It's TR919 and you have a resistor there um, 35R359 and that diode there as well. Now the sinusoidal waveform is coming from that pin 7 going onto here through the transistor and onto this board here to generate a uh, a waveform to drive this but and that waveform should appear on um, TP902 here uh, this middle one is uh, I said it was TP7 it's not it's TP907 so anyway there's I'm not getting any signal onto here so there's something gone wrong on this board further up underneath this power supply and all this gubbins here so it's going to be quite difficult to fault find that uh, not necessarily because of complexity but because you just can't really get in there very easily it's very difficult to work on this really um, this chassis doesn't pull out um, it's fixed on with screws at the back there I could take this power supply out and it might give me more space but it's difficult everything is strapped together it's quite difficult to work on this on the other hand with no rewind and no fast forward this board here has a fault on the decoder um, circuit so that would be easier to fault find although getting to it with this uh, this big real controller board in the way is difficult as well so I'm really beginning to realize why I had some uh, negative comments on my post because obviously there's I don't think this is easy for anyone to repair unless they're uh, unless they know these units well I don't know these at all um, I'm sort of learning from looking at the diagram looking at the circuit trying to work it out um, so unless you really know these these are a bit of a beast to work on unless you're lucky in the fact that you find a lot of these capacitors are, have had it and you replace the capacitors and restore it that's an uh, ideal solution but on this there's no loose connectors there's no bad capacitors so you know it is actually a, a fault on this so anyway uh, I obviously I haven't really got a solution I can tell you about at the moment I'm just really pointing out for your purposes what the boards are and what they do and yeah I'm going to work on this a bit more and, and see if I can somehow fault find this board and uh, I'll let you know what I find although what I find wrong with this probably wouldn't apply to your unit but hopefully watching this video you've actually gleaned something out of it that you might find useful anyway thanks very much for watching